This is Plus TV Africa. Welcome to Tea Time, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories. My name is Elsie Godwin, and I've got my interesting co anchors with me, Ife Omai and Ife Olua Oshunke. What's up? Good. How are you doing? Well. <laughs> I'm still, I'm in my laughing mode, so it's, I'm trying to get over the laughter, but you know, the laughter is just so strong. <laughs> I know you guys understand, but yeah. I don't think Ife will find it funny, but. Mm, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> is, uh, we all know. Mm, okay. How is that for? Is that for you? For you. I don't understand. Since I want Demi to laugh. Nah, it's not going to happen. I'm not, I'm not as hyper as you are, so. I wasn't even hyper this morning. That's all, because I watched the show again. I was like, if it was one of my hyper mornings, mm. I would understand. But this mm. morning, I was relatively calm, so mm. I don't know. Okay, came from. moving on to the main story of this episode. Barely one year after announcing his plan to venture into Nollywood, M.I. Abaga has finally delved into the filmmaking profession. He took part in producing the first of its kind um, Nollywood and Bollywood movie titled Namaste Wahala. M.I. took to his Instagram page to reveal he joined the crew of Namaste Wahala as an associate producer. Good for him. Mm -hmm. Good for him. The movie doesn't, you know, usually, well, I guess it's 2020 though. Usually when they say like, oh, it's my first movie, it's usually crap. Like it looks crap. This actually doesn't look bad. It has mm. some heavy um, stars. I, I feel like it's... The, it has the, RMD, yeah. Inidima, Koji, yeah. Usas. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And also like the mix in culture that mm -hmm. they're doing. That's also like, you can tell like, you know, it has that international <coughs> spin to it or whatever. So that's kind of nice. Mm -hmm. I like the fact that they're also exploring another space entirely because we've seen um, collaborations with American actors and American film industries and that's Nollywood and um, Hollywood to do movies together or come together and get some people in their movies. But this time around it's the Bollywood which is also one of the biggest um, movie industries in the world. So um, big shout out to that. And um, secondly, um, RMD is also the executive producer, so I believe it has to be a great movie because... Uh, RMD, the executive producer? Yeah, it's the executive okay. producer. The one I saw was um, Hamish Dayani, the lady mm. that she's the executive producer, but we need to come from oh, the, the executive part. producer. Yeah. Oh. RMD, I think he's just part of the movie, but... No, he's, he's executive something, maybe director or producer or something, but he's, he has um, an executive role to play in this movie as If you well. say so. And um, what's his name? Am I being the associate um, producer? So that's a big one. I think everybody's beginning to see that at least most creators are beginning not to limit themselves anymore. So they're trying to diversify from doing the music. Now you're doing the movies as well. So big shout out to him. I am. For me, I like where he's starting from. So people actually uh, with his level of influence and money, you expect that he wants to just jump into being an executive producer mm. or doing something. But I feel like he's understudying the industry yeah. and making sure that when he decides to put his money um, into a movie or put his whole self into a project, he will not be losing. So yeah. I think that's one thing I admire and I would love to see this one. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Do you think it's going to be more of comedy or I mean, well, you can, re from what I saw in the synopsis, it's really about love. That's mm -hmm. the main focus. And I, I'm really worried about, um, obviously, I'm not a, I'm, I think I'm a harder fanatic of movies than mm -hmm. I enjoy. But I'm really hoping it's not from the big sick um, movie. I don't know if you know the big sick movie where the Indian and the white person, and there was cultural difference mm -hmm. and they love. I hope it's not that storyline mm -hmm. because okay. it sounded a lot like, like it. it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I hope they put something, you know, like a different spin to it, something new. Um, it does, I think it's like about, it's drama, a lot okay. of drama and a lot of intense um emotions coming out of it so i'm i'm, I'm hoping i like mi so i'm gonna keep an open mind mm -hmm. but i'm no, not I really see. expecting much i also okay. like to see how they incorporated both um rich cultures into this movie because nigeria has a very rich culture and um india is also known well to it was part of the synopsis culture, as well so. that mm -hmm. the movie is based on trying to immerse us to rich cultures exactly the words you use actually together and that's what you will see oh yeah um, in that movie okay. that's I how exactly the how synopsis, we, but i would like to see how they made use of those because um those cultures i don't think you can go wrong give the stories well written okay um i can't wait for april april 24 right yeah. so i can't wait for that one and we're trying to get mi and hamish on the show soon so we'll keep working on that and trust the time to get it done anyway moving on to the next story in an interview ben affleck has described his divorce from jennifer garner as his biggest regrets 
Okay, so this was a series of um, talks on his sobriety and marriage and the mistakes yeah. he's made, coming out and falling in again and all that. But for me, I think basically all these talks, um, they're coming to the surface now because he's working on something. That's how I feel. Working on like a new project. Yeah, he right. and Matt Damon are writing together again after a very long time. So they're working on a project. So I think we'll be seeing a lot of him in the news. Um, telling us about his struggles and all but his struggles have been there although it's not on the surface like it happens and then you read it and you move on but they've been divorced since 2018 18, right yeah. and he's back now so i'm looking forward to the job they're working on i know he's doing he will be fine yeah <laughs> um I, I i think it's not just about the job and that's the reason why he's coming out he's had a pretty rough um, time. Mm. I really like Ben Affleck um, and he has always had that, um, well I say, persona on TV to be this hardcore man and mm -hmm. like really macho. So I love, I'm always about breaking down toxic masculinity. So I'm really happy when a man who's strong and always appears to be strong I mean, is coming stature, with Like his, when you see, exactly. did you see the video that leaked um, some months before the divorce went through finally, the one about him losing it on the streets and all that, you'll be wondering, mm -hmm. okay, this is the guy we watch that's also that's put the, yeah, together in like movies yeah, and all, yeah. you know? I like and that. I like the way he's talking about real things that are very, like, core to men, especially when you talk about family pressures, being a man, um, him driving himself to alcohol. There is a lot more functioning alcoholics as men than as women. So it's a big topic he's, he's um, driving at. I was reading, I just want my heart because it's good to see that somebody has been reflective enough mm -hmm. to even regret. Mm -hmm. That's why I always have a problem when people say, I don't regret anything in life. It's like, yeah, yeah. But I, I, and I'm guessing you mean that in a sense of you don't want regrets to be toxic. But you need to have an element of that where mm -hmm. you have critically analyzed and you bit your finger on that. And I, I feel like that's something that's nice. And I'm, I, I know this is a very um, naive place, but I really hope they get back together as well he and jennifer mm. depending on how much she has moved on yeah, but, but um, since he's I, 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 i'm lucky hoping for that i hope so for you too <laughs> so since he's um, breaking things down maybe he should go further in letting us know what he thought he could have done better mm. because there are so many young men that i feel need a lot of mentoring so yeah. with people like him they would listen so mm. if he can also go a bit be a bit more open to say i think if i had handled this this mm. way it would have been this way because when they still having their marital issues he turned to alcohol yeah so rather than turning to alcohol what do you what since you're regretting what do you think you could have done yeah. better to save the situation i mean a good person has really kind of touched on that subject is um lamar mm -hmm. Instead, especially with drug abuse and drug um uh, substance abuse and all that stuff and also giving you solutions i think common has also been another person mm -hmm. to speak up so this it's quite a trend um and it's a good one it's something that i i hope that doesn't Was just stay as a, drugs no but it's common is one of the people that have talked about um pressure that men have faced um, and how he's been able to deal with it. He talks about how it's affected his love life and how he can't even really be there for and be able to settle for a family and all that stuff. That's what I mean. All right, so um, for Ben Affleck, I like the fact that um, I think the best, for me, the first step to recovery and the first step to doing the writing is when you know where you've gone wrong, admission. And um, for him to admit that um, that's his biggest regret and he even knows exactly what caused him to behave in such a way, that's the f first step in the right direction, if you ask me. So I think it's on the right path right now because now you know that, okay, this was the cause of our problem. Yeah. These are the things that I did that led to our breakup. And um, he's not trying to put the blame on the both of them now. He's trying to put the blame on just himself because obviously we're not saying that um, Jennifer Garner is also perfect. Obviously, she must have had a fault. Maybe she didn't. Maybe she wasn't even supportive enough when he had the alcohol problem and all of that. But he's not bringing all that into the light. He's just making sure that, okay, this you is... You are bringing all that into the light. <laughs> yes, no, I'm saying it like... No, obviously, we know how these things play out. It's just um, human nature. Another man will probably say, I wish you were more supportive, I wish you were calmer, I wish you were... I mean, this is a drug, this is a, it's a serious problem. It's not like a behavioral problem. We're talking about drug abuse. Like, she's not his doctor. He would need more help than that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need to move on, though. Yeah, so um, finally, I just like the fact that he's in the, it's, a, it's taking a step in the right direction, which is admission. So he knows his problem and is um, obviously working on, um, working on it and remorseful about it. All right, it's time for a quick break, but when we return, Comedian Alibaba is in the news.
Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child. I decide them every day. <laughs> <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like an Alibaba? Alibaba. Oh, <laughs> Plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to do Everybody feeling alright. Still buy. Sometimes I look myself, minimal are you? Mm. Akpala music is for mature minded people. I got DM sometimes from Malawi, like, woo! Sleeping early, sleeping early. This is still tea time on Plus TV Africa. Comedian Ali Baba France at Begging Culture Among Persons with Disability. In a lengthy Instagram post, he said, the culture of social sympathy for Nigerians, instead of empowering them, is going to be the generosity of a people that comes to bite us in the end. Um, no pun intended. He went on to say, much, much as we would be sentimental about this matter, I believe empowering physically challenged Nigerians is more important than using them as an essay excuse to be generous it's quite a lengthy post that i can't read all but that's a summary of it and he was just saying that they can do better they can work what do you think <sighs> this is a what's the word a multifaceted um issue you cannot just try to put down people with disability when you are living in a country where they, they don't they are not even included in anything yeah. just access to public public buildings they are not considered when that is being done and when it comes to um disabilities it's directly linked with poverty so disability leads to poverty poverty leads to disability in the sense that you cannot they cannot when you're poor you cannot get access to good health and all that and most of it i mean from the statistic i saw 80 percent of people living with disability live in developing countries one um an estimated one billion people are with disability but then they are much in the um, developing countries and they cannot they cannot just decide to say i want to beg mm. now for a place like nigeria even those without disabilities <laughs> do they have jobs mm. he mentioned something about them um doing the whole <clears throat> um shoemaking carrying mm. things yeah i understand but is there really jobs for these people that's mm. the first question so i like this set of people he said he was having these conversations with mm. emir right mm. former senator mm. who governor. else did he mention governor mm. i hope that after the long hours of conversation like he put it they were able to talk to themselves to go back to their they constituencies on the joke where they said that the day need i help when they want to sleep with their wives mm. yeah i just hope in the end there mm. like what are they going to put in place for those people? Yeah, mm. I think the tone of I, I don't like messages like this, um, where it's somebody who has a lot of power talking about somebody who doesn't. Um, mm. It's too the, the the gap is too big. You know, it's like uh, it's uh, it's it's ridiculous, and there is a lot of pompousness to it. Um, people who who spend a lot of time on classism and how that works in society will find this a very good example of why that that is a problem. Also, like you mentioned, these are not. There's nobody in that conversation that's grassroots that has any idea of how things work. If I had a a, a, a shop or a mechanic place that I I had someone who could wash my car for me, and a disabled person came and a non-disabled person came, mm -hmm. would I really hire a disabled person over? that um, other person yeah. now to not to rant on and just give complaints a good solution that i know of is always to go back to the government a good example i know of a country that really implements its um this this um disabled citizens are Australians so they actually hire these people so um, the government hires you and then sources you to a company and say i'm going to be paying for this person but i need them to work at this place mm -hmm. i need them to work at this place and then they Put and the plans. A percentage of um, um, people you must hire yeah. in your say you, your your company can afford to hire twenty people. Right. I think one or two or so has to be 
someone with a form of disability yeah. so they can and there's also the whole anti-discrimination laws in certain countries like australia you yeah. mentioned canada um a few other ones i can't mention i remember now but they, i think, I think they're about 40 yeah but of course nigeria is, is not nowhere on, on yeah. that list ghana is there but then there's another report which says since 2005 when this rep um law was um agreed to nothing has That's really happened, changed yeah. So. And, and, um, and I think, I'm not going to say that Alibaba is absolutely wrong. I, for one, I'm a victim. I'm a like an offender in that where I'm easily moved by emotion. So once person, somebody comes to my window, it's like, I'll just take, I'll just take. And I've noticed it's not always a good thing mm -hmm. either to encourage that because at the end of the day, you can always find another option. But is there always another option? And, and to what degree do you, because for you to say that people shouldn't be generous is a bit extreme. I can give my money to who I want to give it to. But what is the line? Poverty capital. Exactly. Right now, so. And you can see some people have serious, especially the ones that are disfiguring. I think people also forget that there's levels to disability. Mm. A, uh, you have to understand that the world also works on fine girl syndrome or fine boy syndrome. There is privilege to being pretty. Mm. And the opposite for people who have a deformity that's obvious. When your disability starts to look, quote unquote, scary, um, it's even harder for but those people. But don't forget, people. he actually focused more on deaf, deaf and dumb. dumb. That's um, visually, no, deaf, dumb. Okay, yeah. listening, right? And yeah. Speaking, speaking, yeah. But even then, how are we going to do? How are we going to go through traffic? Where we don't? It's not like as if no everybody stops at, at green oh, lights and person can ride cross over. And I'm wondering, are you still how in can this you, country? Yeah, like, like how you can you? Rob, <laughs> and how can you even ride Okada? Do they know that when you lose your your? I think it's talking about your, nationally. I think it's just Lagos that Okada has been banned. So it's, no, not just Lagos. Well, not really banned, but restricted. Yeah, but not just Lagos. Because yeah, I know, I know a few well. Okada men that have gone back to their states. Mm. To I'm guessing that was business. the plan. That was the idea mm. for that for that type of banning anyway. Um, but yeah, he just needs to be more careful and more sensitive. I, I know rich kids in Nigeria that have disabilities, they're just lucky enough not to be on the street, but they can't still get jobs. So mm. let's be mm -hmm. let's be sensitive. And when you're... Okay, maybe if I should come in here. I have a problem with this post, and at the same time, I don't have a problem with the post. So I'll start with um, the first problem I have with this post is that um, I'm going to go back to a documentary we did out here on little people. Now, these are people that um, their, their disability it doesn't even affect them from doing physical things, right? But um, some of them would tell you... To an you, extent. To an extent, yes. Um, will tell you that uh, they go for job interviews, they ace the exams, they did everything, right? But because they're little people, they won't get the job. Right. Do you understand? Now, that's one. We've seen people that... Um, I don't know, the story that came out recently of a face model that um she actually got the job and when she got there she is she mm -hmm. was an amputee or she is an amputee and because of that the person was like oh i didn't know you are an amputee sorry you can't get the job but the face is beautiful you need just a face you right. need, you were asking for a face model but because of that she didn't get the job so first of all the problem i have with this is that there's a lot of discrimination going on in this part of the mm -hmm. world um, as far as those people are concerned to even start with now but when I say I also agree to it to an extent is the fact that um, if we keep giving them handouts, 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 it's more like encouraging than to keep begging. Now, I'm also going to make reference to our colleague as well, who has taken it upon herself to integrate enough children back into school personally. So the times that we'll be driving back home and then the street beggars come to us and they're like, and she looks at them, says, do you want money? Or maybe we have orange or banana or adbalumo. Do you want money or you want adbalumo or you want to go to school? And they make a choice. If they say money, she gives them the money. If they say adbalumo, she gives them the adbalumo. If they say she wants to go back, she gives them a number or take theirs. And she will reintegrate them. At least so far, I know she has um, sent like four kids back to school. Do you understand? And these kids are actually doing well. So it's it's... Uh, it's everybody's duty. So don't look down on these people. Don't make it look like you said. It's quite a stretch for you to say, don't give to these people because it's my money at the end mm. of the day and it's what I decide yeah, to do. Yeah, and I don't want him to make so, it look like generosity is such a bad yeah, it's thing. There should a be a thing. boundary to that, but keep in mind the context of this. I would never give my money to a beggar in America, for example, because there's shelters, there's this, there's provisions, there's mm. that. 
But here, you need to be more considerate. So, um, I think generosity should also be defined. So, if you're saying that, okay, if you know that you have a job, like, for instance, you say washing your car, so you can even talk to some of these people, are you open to coming to wash my car? Are you, mm. do, do you do laundry? Has anybody tried to offer them things to do? But we just look at it and say, oh, we're not going to give you money because you're supposed to be doing something. But we know that there's discrimination in this part of the world where these people are not even getting the jobs. They Some of them, it's not like they haven't tried, but this is their last resort. And they're like, okay, so this is what I need, I have to do. Okay. And um, we're out of time. I wish we had more time on this one, but this is how we end this particular episode. Thank you for watching. And do visit our YouTube channel, our Plus TV Africa, to watch this conversation all over again, and also to see all our exclusive content at Plus TV Africa. You can also watch the time on Alto TV and in London on Ben Television. Thank you, as always, to go to my co-anchors, Ife Omai and Ife Oluwa Shoke, and the entire production team. Thank you for watching Tea Time. My name is Elsie Godwin. Stay with us.